Welcome to a video outlining some basics on the greatest common divisor. So starting off with a definition, for integers a and b, the greatest common divisor of a and b is the largest integer that divides both a and b. So for example, the GCD of 45 and 33 is 3, since 3 divides 45 and, 5, and 3 divides 33, and 3 is the largest such integer. Similarly, the GCD of 56 and negative 20 is 4, and the GCD of negative 56 and negative 20 is also 4, so you can see that the negative signs don't matter. The GCD of 0 and n is equal to n for all positive integers n, since n divides 0, since n is equal to 0 times n, and certainly n divides n, since n is equal to n times 1. The GCD of 0 and 0 is not defined since every integer divides 0, so there is no greatest integer that divides 0. Since 1 divides every integer, the GCD of two integers is always at least 1. In other words, a positive integer. So in general, if D is an integer that divides both A and B, then we will say that D is a common divisor of A and B. So in this case, we can say that A is equal to D times K and B is equal to D times L for some integers K and L. In particular, this is the case if D is the GCD of A and B. So for example, 5 is a common divisor of 30 and 40, since 5 divides 30 and 5 divides 40. Now there is an equivalent definition of the greatest common divisor that appears in some sources, and we will actually prove later in the course uh, that these are equivalent, but just to put that out here, um, uh, the equivalent, an equivalent definition is that the GCD of A and B is a positive integer D um, that is a common divisor of A and B, and for any common divisor of A and B, uh, that, that common divisor divides the GCD. So the difference here is uh, that instead of commenting on the largest integer, um, it comments on if any you have any other common divisor, then that common divisor divides the GCD. And it turns out that these definitions are equivalent. Uh, but we will use the more basic definition for the time being. All right, so one thing to note here is that if C is a common divisor of A and B, then by definition of greatest, we know that C is less than or equal to the GCD of A and B. And this turns out to be a handy little fact uh, when proving things about GCDs. Uh, in the previous example, we saw that 5 is a common divisor of 30 and 40. And sure enough, 5 is less than or equal to 10, which is the greatest common divisor of 30 and 40. And now for a basic proof example, let A and B be integers. We want to prove that the GCD of A and B is less than or equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. So we can use our strategy here. Um, our goal is to show that the GCD of A and B is a common divisor of A minus B and B. And then by this little fact, we will know that the GCD of A and B is less than or equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. Okay, so writing out our strategy. Um, show that the GCD of A and B is a common divisor of A minus B and B. Okay, so uh, it's useful 
to let a letter stand for the GCD of A and B, so we don't have to carry this notation around. So I'm going to let D equal the GCD of A and B. And we want to show that D divides A minus B and D divides B. All right, well, knowing that D is the GCD of A and B, we already have that D divides A and D divides B. So really, we're already halfway there because we're trying to show that D divides B and we already have that. So all we need is to show that D divides A minus B. All right, well, we can unpack this. Uh, since D divides A, we know that A is equal to D times K for some integer K. And since D divides B, we have B is equal to D times L for some integers K and L. Thus, and now we need to work on a minus b. So a minus b uh, is equal to, just by substitution, dk minus dl. And this is good because we want to show that d divides a minus b. So we can factor out a d. And since k minus l is an integer, we have that d divides a minus b. So since D divides A minus B and D divides B, we have that D is a common divisor of A minus B and B. Thus, by our handy fact, D is less than or equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. Okay, and so one other element of uh, strategy that comes in handy with GCDs uh, is the following sort of general fact that in order to prove that two numbers C and D are equal, you can try to show that C is less than or equal to D, and D is less than or equal to C. If you can show that each number is less than or equal to the other, then you will know that both numbers must be equal to each other. Uh, and this is especially useful uh, since uh, we now have a nice uh, strategy involving inequalities with GCDs, and we might be able to apply this twice and a proof. For example, uh, we already proved that the GCD of A and B is less than or equal to the GCD of A minus B and B, but it turns out that those two GCDs are actually equal to each other. And so that all that remains to prove in order to prove that these numbers are equal uh, is to prove the other inequality. Okay, we already proved this one, and so all we need to do is to show this one. Okay, so we have showed, shown that the GCD of A and B is less than or equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. So it remains to show that the GCD of A minus B and B is less than or equal to the GCD of A and B. So this proof is very similar to the other one, and I invite you to pause the video and try to work it out yourself before going on. Okay, so here's how it goes. So again, I'm going to use a letter to represent um, um, C being the GCD of A minus B and B. And we want to show that C is a common divisor of A and B. So in other words, we want to show that C divides A and C divides B. 
Well, since C is the GCD of A and B, we have that C divides A minus B and C divides B. So we're already halfway there. Thus, A minus B is equal to C times M and B is equal to C times N for some integers M and N. Thus, and we want to work on A, now we need to show that C divides A. So we can solve for A here and get A equals CM plus B, which is CM plus CN. And we can factor out a C to show that now C divides A. And that's good because we're done now since C divides A and C divides B. We have that C is a common divisor of A and B. Thus, C is less than or equal to the GCD of A and B. And now we have shown this direction. And so we can conclude by saying, therefore, the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. I hope you found this video helpful.